Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome on this glorious Easter morning. If we've never met before, my name is Joni Schilling. I'm honored to be one of the pastors of this wonderful church family. It's so good to see everyone here in person and a special welcome to those of you that are joining us online. If you are online, please let us know that you're with us by filling out the connection card and um, letting us know of any ways we can support you and pray for you. So I would invite you now to join me in prayer. Holy God, your glory and power were made known in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because he lives, we are bold to say, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Thank you, Lord, for the victory that Christ's death has won over sin and his resurrection has won over death. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you please stand and we'll join together in singing our opening hymn, starting with Christ up, up from the grave.
seated. This morning's children's message is for our children and the child in all of us. And Easter egg hunts are a part of Easter, and that reminds me that searching is a part of Easter. And I wanted to provide you all with a hunt this morning, so I have hidden something in here amongst you. Go ahead, take a look around you. Can you find what I've hidden? Anyone? It's a little hard to recognize or find an item when you're not quite sure what you're finding. Well, right in front of Gretchen, yes, there is an item in the seat pocket in front of you, and it's yours. Go ahead, grab it, Gretchen. <laughs> that is what I hid. And Gretchen may not have found it because she didn't know what she was looking for, nor did any of you. In John 20, 11 through 18, Mary was sitting at the tomb weeping. She went there searching for Jesus' body. Angels appeared to her where Jesus' body had been, and Mary cried to the angels that she didn't know where Jesus' body had gone. She turned around, and there was a man. He asked her why she was weeping, and it was Jesus, but she did not recognize him. But when he said her name, she instantly recognized him. You see, Mary had been searching for Jesus' body rather than looking for the risen Lord. And because she was looking for the wrong thing, she didn't even recognize Jesus when he stood before her. Like Mary, sometimes we don't recognize Jesus in our lives because we don't know who Jesus truly is. We don't know who we are looking for because we are looking for a certain version of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. He came to earth, lived a sinless life, and, live, and willingly died on the cross to take the punishment for our sin. When we know these truths, when we spend time with him, it helps us better know who Jesus is. And when we better know him, we are more able to recognize him in our lives. If we went on an Easter egg hunt and didn't know what we were searching for, it would be pretty hard to find it. If we don't know Jesus, it is awfully hard for us to recognize him in our lives. Remember that today as you celebrate Easter and each day of the year. Will you pray with me? God, help us to see you. Help us to recognize you. Help us to know the truth of who you are and what you have done for us. We are thankful that you died for us on the cross to save us from our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, amen. Will you pray with me? Glorious God, with joy we celebrate an empty tomb, a savior who has defeated death, the start of a movement that has changed the world. Because you are risen, we get a clean slate you rescue us from our past and make us whole. We are forgiven. Because you are risen, abundant life is ours, both now and for eternity. Because you are risen, the story of God's hope, love, and grace lives on. Because you are risen, we can find comfort in the midst of life's turmoil and trials. Because you are risen, our grief over loved ones lost is tempered with the knowledge that we will be together again. Because you are risen, the evil of this world that can seem to be winning, we know will ultimately be defeated. Lord, may resurrection hope sustain us and all those in a season of difficulty. May your resurrection hope comfort all those who are hurting, including those who will be receiving a prayer quilt. 
May your resurrection hope inspire and empower us, your church, to be a genuine reflection of Jesus, full of grace and love and truth. In the name of Christ, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the good news according to John. John 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of cloth lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still not, did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him. I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The good news, according to John. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Pastor Joni. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Russ Titchener. I'm honored to be one of the pastors here at Mommy United Methodist Church. I, I said it was like old school week this morning, uh, seeing these faces that we haven't seen in a long time. And I had to introduce myself again, so that was good. So, uh, so I'm, I'm wondering uh, if we can share the, the rabbit, uh, the chocolate rabbit, maybe. Uh, yes, okay, yeah. Maybe I'll see you afterwards, Gretchen, yeah. 
Well, this is the greatest day in the Christian uh, faith experience. Uh, we uh, not only celebrate the human birth of God in the person of Jesus Christ, we not only celebrate Jesus' willingness to die for our sins, uh, but today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, that validates and affirms all the promises of God. That validates and affirms all the promises of, of Jesus, including the promise that everyone that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The resurrection is the exclamation point, if you will. The ta-da that God gets to say over all of creation. And we're here today uh, to celebrate that. So let's take a moment and pray, and then I'll move into the sermon. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for Easter. Lord, it is a long journey through Lent to get here. And we're still not quite done, as we will see this morning, with the darkness. And yet your light breaks forth and cannot hold back its power to evaporate the darkness from our midst. Lord, today, we thank you for that. No matter what we are facing, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, no matter how grave it is, it is your power that will evaporate the darkness in our lives and set us on right footing of the cross of Jesus Christ, on the rock of salvation. And today, Lord, we give you praise and glory for that. We thank you for all that you have done for us in Christ and for the celebration of the resurrection. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. You know, we had our Easter sunrise service this morning. It was beautiful. Um, we came in, it was dark. There was a, like a big crescent moon. I don't know, maybe it was a half moon. I don't know. But it was, no, there was a crescent there. Uh, but it was, you know, right over here. And then it started getting lighter and the sun started coming up. And, and, and the sunrise service really kind of gets us in step, if you will, for, 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 Easter, for Easter morning. Yes, if we look at all four accounts of the Gospels, we see in every account, when it comes to the resurrection story in those Gospel stories, uh, how the women... The women who were followers of Jesus showed up at the tomb early on the, the first day of the week. Now, they say the first day of the week uh, because uh, the last day of the week, according to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Jewish tradition, according to the way God uh, created, six days he created, one day he rested, uh, the seventh day and the first day then being Sunday. And so, and so the, the community had just gone through the, the Passover on the previous day, on Saturday, on the Sabbath. And now on the next day, on that first day of the week, on that Sunday morning, these women are arriving at the tomb so that they could pre uh, finish preparing Jesus' body, which had been started on that, on that uh, Friday evening prior to the Sabbath. But while all the gospel accounts reveal indeed that it is the women that show up early on the first day of the week, only the gospel of John indicates that it was so early that it was so early that they showed up that it was still dark. You know, no other gospel writer taps into this idea of dark and light like John does. Over and over in his gospel, we see this, this imagery of, of darkness versus light. And here in this passage, he's doing it again in his opening words of the resurrection account by simply writing these words. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, and then Mary, Mary went to the tomb. Now, John writes a different kind of gospel. Uh, writes a different kind of gospel than Matthew, Mark, and Luke. If we look at the opening of, of Matthew, we see a, a, a genealogy, which we did a, uh, a sermon series on that not too long ago. If we, if we look at the opening of Matthew, we see a baptism, uh, baptism of, of Jesus by John the Baptist. If we look at the opening of Luke, we see the birth story of Jesus. But when we look at the opening of John and his gospel, we, we see the, the creation story. Yes, John's opening words in his gospel mirror the opening of the Bible in Genesis as he writes in his gospel in the beginning. And in doing so, reveals the, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus as the turning point 
reveals his gospel about this person of Jesus Christ as the turning point in history. Not just for us, but for all of creation. And it is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ that, that God ushers in then, this turning point, ushers in this new creation. Not yet consummated, but certainly started. Not at the end of time like the Jewish tradition held, but the, the very moment that Jesus was raised from the dead. And so striving to paint that picture again at the end of his gospel, John, among other things, points his listeners to, to, the, to the first creation, where in the first hours of the first creation, in the first hours of the first day of the week, it was still dark. In Genesis 1, 1 through 5, it says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. One translation says of this darkness in the beginning of creation, they translated it, and the earth was waste and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And Eugene Peterson, in the message, he translates that darkness in the first of creation on that first day as this. He says, earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. Yes, in the beginning of creation, as well in, as in John's resurrection story, they, they both start in, in darkness. No doubt that was, was the kind of darkness that, that Mary Magdalene was experiencing as she was walking to the tomb in the dark that day. Not so much the physical darkness, even though it was present, but certainly the mental darkness and the emotional darkness and the spiritual darkness. Mary was the, the woman who Jesus had healed by, by casting seven demons out of her. And as a result, she had trusted Jesus and, and was probably wealthier and so had started to support Jesus' ministry and started with the other women to follow Jesus and his disciples around. They had been in a different place just a week before, filled with all sorts of excitement and expectation as Jesus had, had ridden into Jerusalem to the cheers of all of the people. But now after witnessing a grueling week, after witnessing the the uh, crucifixion after witnessing the burial. She too, as she walked, no doubt was just this soup of, of nothingness, this bottomless emptiness, this black inkiness. You know, if ever we as a church could identify just a little bit more with this darkness that Mary is experiencing on Easter morning, it would probably be this year after the year that we've gone through, right? Many of us this last year living in a, in a COVID wasteland have, have at times, depending upon you were fa what you were facing, but, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that there were some of you that were in this bottomless emptiness, this inky blackness. Seemingly, at times, for some of you, I believe those moments in which you were like virtually almost without any hope because of the situation or circumstance that you were facing. I recently read about a woman, Sandy Brown, who lives in Detroit, who at this same time last year lost her 59-year-old husband and her 20-year-old son to the coronavirus. She said 20 years ago, her son had been her miracle. After suffering two miscarriages and being 40 years old, she thought she would never have, child, have a child. And then, surprise, right? But then when she lost them both just three days apart, and she buried them both on 
Good Friday one year ago, this coming Friday. Well, she said it was unbelievable. You remember a year ago, I'm sure. At the time in her community, no one was permitted at the funeral except for the immediate family. No one was permitted at the graveside to get out of her car, their cars, except for her. And so there she was, standing by herself, as the two people she loved most in the world were lowered into their graves. Can you imagine Sandy Brown's pain? Well, if you can, then you can probably imagine the pain of Mary Magdalene as she walked that day to the tomb, only to find the stone removed and the tomb empty. And so running to to Simon Peter and John, she, she cried out in this confusion and pain that they had, that they had taken the body of Jesus and responding, both, both Peter and John ran for the tomb. And looking in, they saw the, cla- the clothes that had been wrapped around Jesus in the same position they were, except without any body in them. You know, one of the mistakes I believe we make sometimes on our faith journey is is thinking that we are the initiators of our our faith. That we are the ones making connection with God by doing something, by reaching up. When in reality, faith is all about God reaching down to us. Yes, God is the one who throughout history gives uh, time and time again that example. As he, as he creates in the garden and forms Adam and Eve and breathes life by reaching down, breathes life into both. Reaching down to Noah, bringing him and his family through the flood on an ark. Reaching down to Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob as he forms a new nation. Or reaching down to, to Moses and, and, and Joshua as they lead a nation out of slavery or or reaching down to David to rule a nation. God is the one who is continually reaching down, initiating, if you will, our faith, reaching down to us, eventually becoming flesh in the person of Jesus Christ and moving into our neighborhoods. John, in his creation story, From the beginning says it like this. He says, in the beginning was the Word, or Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. You see, just as we are not denied the physical light of creation, in other words, the the sun will rise and it will shine on all of us. That is not denied to any of us. And neither are we denied God's light in our lives, no matter what we face. You know, Michelle has a lamp that is her grandmother's. Very fragile, but very sturdy, right? I had to go find it. It was all covered with dust. It was dirty. So I took it to the sink, and I cleaned it all up and shined it up, and I brought it today, right? Isn't that amazing? Now, that globe is so fragile in one sense, but it's so durable because it's lasted, I don't know, maybe... 75, 80 years. But it refracts the light, right? It lets us see the light in our lives. Continually moving forward from the center, that light is going to touch each one of us. And there's really nothing we can do about it. We can close our eyes, but that light is still making its way from that flame to our faces. It is still touching us. We can turn away, we can close our eyes, 
We can turn away because of our brokenness and our pain, but that light is still moving and still wooing and still touching and still reaching out just like God's love for us, no matter what we're facing. God reaches out in every situation and in every circumstance, promising that, promising that darkness and evil will not overcome us. And the resurrection is the proof of that. For Mary, her darkness was, was her grief. And she stood outside the tomb crying. And seeing the angel, she questions them as to the whereabouts of Jesus. And then seeing Jesus but not recognizing him, she questions him about the same. And so Jesus, in great compassion and kindness, pulls back that curtain again from the kingdom of God and lets her experience in that moment that kingdom presence. Mary. And when he said it, she recognized him. Rabboni, teacher. And she moves out and grabs hold of him and instantly, and instantly he pulls back. You know, Jesus tells us over and over again that we do not have to be afraid of losing him. That he will not leave us, that, that he will not forget about us. He says in John 8, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Is God, like this flame, is constantly reaching out to us. Chasing us, wooing us, pursuing us with light and love. And yet oftentimes in life we, we fail to experience the intimacy with Christ. The intimacy with Jesus that we desire. Because we are hanging on to things that don't line up with God's will for our life. See, for Mary, she was, she was tempted to hold on to her will. And her plans about Jesus, her will is that I got you and you're not leaving, right? Rather than letting go of her will and letting God's will rule the day. In his book, Turning My Morning into Dancing, Henry Nouwen tells the story of going to the circus with his, with his father when he was a kid. He stated, we watched the, the trapeze artists, right, as, as th there were three flyers and two catchers as they danced in the air. The flyers soared, and all was dangerous until, until they found themselves caught by the strong hands of their partners. Now and goes on to say, I'm constantly moved by, by, the, by, the, by the courage of my circus friends. After each, at each performance, they, they trust that their, that their flight will end with their hands sliding into the secure grip of their partner. And yet they also know that it is only their release from the secure bar that allows them to, to move on with this arching grace to the next before they can be caught. They must be let go, or they must let go. And that's true for you and I. But because before we can experience God catching us in his will, then, then we've got to let go of ours. Let go of our will. So we were able then to grasp our Father's hands, who will catch us. And guide us and direct us. Jesus tells Mary, don't, don't hang on to me. I haven't ascended at my father. And go instead. In other words, Mary, change your will here. Go instead. To my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and to your father. To my God and your God. And so that's what she did. She let go of her will for her life to cling to Jesus. She let go of her will for her life to, to let go and take hold of God's will for her life. 
And because she did, she provided the first witness, the first testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to the world. You know, there was a recent update in the, in the newspaper concerning Sandy Brown, that woman who lost her, her husband and her son to the COVID virus. It's a year later, and she's coming up on the anniversary of that burial, like I said, next Friday. And, and she said, as I prepared my husband and son on Good Friday last year, I was in, enveloped by my faith. God wrapped his arms around me tightly. She said, it's the only way that I have been able to deal with the grief. I have good days and not so good days. But I realize that I'm not the only person who has suffered loss. She says, I am standing in the strength of the Lord. Not my own strength. God has me. Yes, just as a trapeze artist, Sandy has, has let go of the bar. Let go of her will during this time, right? Perhaps the, a will of an ongoing bitter disappointment. Perhaps her will to perhaps turn inward. Perhaps her will to, to not process the pain but stuff it down or treat it differently with drugs or alcohol. And instead she has decided to to let go of her will and allow herself in the midst of her suffering to be caught by God. Yes, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead validates and confirms all of the claims that Jesus said about himself. And what are the claims? Well, we'll find some of them. We can go through John's I am statements. Here's just a few. I am the true vine. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. And finally, in the last statement from the book of Matthew, the last of Jesus' words in the book of Matthew. He says, and surely, I am with you always to the end of the age. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are. You are the light of our life. And you have provided that life through Jesus Christ. And empowered that life through your spirit. So that no matter what we are facing in life, good or bad, your light and your love is shining upon us. Lord, you are constantly reaching out for us. And there is nothing we can do about that. Praise God. So today, Lord, as we give praise to you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, remind us that we live too because he lives. Remind us that nothing that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God that is found in life in Christ Jesus. And the resurrection is the testimony to that truth. Bless us today, Lord. We love you. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, today, if you are at home, and I meant to mention that earlier, we would invite you to... Um, uh, to, and this is one of the advantages to watching from home. You can place me on pause right now, right? <laughs> I'm sorry for you that are here. You cannot do that. Uh, but if you're at home right now and you did not know we were going to have communion today, well, I would invite you to place me on pause and, and you can uh, go and get some bread or some crackers or something that would symbolize the body of Christ and also some juice or some, even some water, something that would symbolize the blood of Christ uh, and bring that back. And, and when you're back there together by yourself or together with your family, then you can start, you can start me back up again. And for you that are here today, if this is the first time you've been with us during communion, we have a little container we've given you. On the very top of that container is a very thin cellophane piece of uh, cellophane that you can pull back, and that will expose the wafer or the bread. 
Uh, if you do it like I did the first 23 times I did it, you won't do that. You'll pull, the, you'll pull both of the things back and it'll expose the juice first, which is fine. And then you can drink the juice and then you can get the bread separated and do that. There's not a, there's not a correct order. You will still uh, be blessed by the elements, even if we do it in the wrong order, okay? And so we do remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread and he blessed it. And then he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it to those gathered and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful for for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to live with us to show us how to live. And who through, Lord, being led by you, willingly laid down his life for us as a sacrifice for our sins. And who, Lord, was put into a tomb and three days later raised from the dead through the resurrection. Lord, today we, we celebrate the activity of God in this meal. And so pour out your blessing upon this bread and this juice, not only here at this table and in this uh, family life center, but at all the homes that are watching today, Lord, or will watch later on this week. Pour out your blessing on each of these elements, Lord. Make them truly the body and blood of Christ, Lord, so that we might receive this gift to our lives, so that this gift might continue to sustain us for the journey until we once again Lord, gather together in celebration in your heavenly banquet that you have provided for us in the future. Lord, bless us today. We love you and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. And so the body of Christ given for you, take and eat. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Take a drink. Blood of Christ shed for you. Will you pray with me? Lord, it is such a simple meal, but such an unbelievable gift. You reveal yourself in the simplicity, the way that a child can understand. Because you don't want us to be confused. You simply gave your life for us so that we might live. And so today, Lord, let us not only receive this meal, but let us receive that truth for our lives. Anything we might be holding on to in our lives, Lord, allow your spirit to forgive us and allow our spirit through you, empowered by your spirit, to forgive ourselves so that we might love others the way you have loved us. Lord, bless us today. We love you and pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.
be seated. Pastor Russ has shared with us evidence of Jesus being alive and being who he says he is. And Jesus is still alive and at work and moving in our world, and we've seen it throughout this year as we have seen uh, hope rise out of difficulty and comfort rise out of suffering and stories of transformation. Uh, just amazing uh, among us, the stories of transformations and healings, and we're so thankful for the ways that God is at work. Please share your stories that we might continue to be evidence of Christ alive among us. Another bit of evidence of Christ alive among us is the miraculous work that he has done through this uh, Lenten season as we have devoted ourselves to study um, through, the, through the walk, through small groups, through preaching and um, prayer, and through our campaign to support the ministry of Mosaic with the Walk with Emmaus campaign to raise money for that amazing ministry in South Toledo that we are a part of. So we've been celebrating each week how, how God has inspired you to give, and so let me do that now for this probably final time, because our goal was to complete this today. So the first week, $7,000 was donated. The second week, $17,500. The third week, $27,000. The fourth week, $42,700. The fifth week, $48,068. The sixth week, $51,618. And today on Resurrection Sunday, we are excited to proclaim that we will be giving the amount of $53,247 to Mosaic Ministries. So much more than we expected. Isn't that the way that God works? It's amazing. Well, um, we thank you for your generosity there. We thank you for continuing to support the ministries of this church. And if you would like to do so today, if you're worshiping online, you can give at the giving tab. Or you can send in your contributions by mail or drop them off if you're worshiping here in person and would like to contribute to the work of this congregation. There will be uh, buckets at the door for you to place your offering. Just a couple of uh, announcements. There is an, uh, a video opportunity for children and families called Easter Jam Reconnect. This is available um, as we speak and going forward. It's, it's ready to go whenever it's convenient for you to participate in this wonderful experience that uh, Bethany and her team have put together. So that's, you go to the church website to connect with that. Want you to be in prayer this week for our confirmands. They have been studying and they are prepared to make their commitment of faith in Jesus Christ on their own behalf next Sunday, which is Confirmation Sunday at the 1030 service. So please be in prayer for those young people. And now receive this benediction. Jesus is alive. Go in the power of the resurrection to be Easter people in a good Friday world, knowing that God goes with you God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with you always, even to the end of the age. And all of God's people said, Amen.